action. Welcome to another episode of Pulse, old time movie classics. And today we are going to be reviewing El Dorado from 1966. Uh, this you can find on Amazon Prime and Paramount Plus. Uh, of course, with me today is Drew Stewart. And he, of course, has been on our other two episodes of Pulse Old Time Movie Classics. Drew is a uh, film savant. He loves watching old stuff. So I knew this was the man to bring in on this podcast. So thank you, Drew, for joining us today. Glad to be here and glad for the premise of this, which is that we get to watch old movies, which I love, but a lot of them that I haven't seen. So it's perfect. Yeah, yeah awesome. Uh, this movie, of course, is directed by Howard Hawks. And for those of you who don't know who Howard Hawks is, he directed the original Scarface uh, in 1932, which, of course, the uh, the one that many people know, the uh, Brian De Palma film is based off of, uh, but they changed the um, to Cuba, of course, and all that good stuff. Uh, he also directed a comedy movie called Bringing Up Baby, and then another Western called Rio Bravo, which is uh, definitely considered one of the better Westerns, if not one of the best Westerns of all time. Um that's why I love Howard Hawks just personally is because and and kind of a guy I model my own uh, directing style because he, this guy can do any type of film. He just he loves t telling different types of stories. So that's always been a, a, a huge influence for me. This was written by Lee Brackett. And this lady is a, a, a crazy good writer, Drew. I don't know if you did any research on her, but she wrote a movie called The Big Sleep. Uh, she also wrote Real Bravo. And then more importantly, Drew, you know, this movie, she wrote Empire Strikes Back. Ooh, nice. So she's definitely got a very eclectic career. Uh, this movie is based on a book by Harry Brown. Um, and the crazy thing is Harry Brown also wrote Ocean's Eleven, Sands of Iwo Jima, and an Elizabeth Taylor film called Places in the Sun. Uh, this film stars John Wayne, of course, Robert Mitchum, who is also a big time Western actor and a young James Caan. I did not look to see where this was in his career, but uh, it's definitely early because he's pretty young in this. Let's... Yeah, I don't know what it was in terms of his chronology, but man, was he young. I, I couldn't believe it. This is like his third movie, maybe uh, that, that he has like a significant role. This might even been. His biggest role, I don't I don't know him that well, but definitely early James Conn. Again, very, very early role for him. Uh, the premise uh, of this film is uh, Cole Thornton, who is uh, John Wayne, uh, is a gun, gun fighter for hire, joins forces with old friend Sheriff J.P. Hara, that's Robert Mitchum, together with an old Indian fighter and a gambler. They help a rancher and his family fight a rival rancher who's trying to steal their water. So this is a classic kind of Western story of territory, territory, all that good stuff, which is what makes, you know, really good Western. Yeah. Uh, IMDb rating 7.5 box office is a uh, budget 4.6 million and it just grossed under 6 million. So it was profitable. Robert Ebert actually awarded the film three and a half stars stating El Dorado is a tightly directed, humorous, altogether successful Western turned out almost effort effortlessly. Oh, geez. Almost effortlessly. It would seem by three, old pros wayne mitchum and director howard hawks uh the film has a 96 approval rating on rotten tomatoes with a weighted average of 7.7 .7. so this movie was a thing so drew uh what is your favorite thing about this film i, I had lots of favorite things so i think i said to you last week that i john wayne was a gap in my film watching experience especially for somebody that likes old films yeah. so i have I've probably seen one or two at a certain point, but long enough ago that I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, this, so I, I didn't know what to expect. And I had to assume that I, because I had not really watched many John Wayne movies or, at all, that for some reason in my mind, I, I just assumed that I wasn't going to like it. Like, you know, Westerns weren't necessarily always my genre, though I like a lot of modern Westerns. Old ones just always kind of felt hokey, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah. So I went in with relatively low expectations and I ended up watching it twice before we oh, nice. did and I loved it. I, yeah. I, I really, really, really enjoyed it way more than I thought I was going to going to. Um, and what was my favorite thing? Well, like you said, there's some heavy hitters in this. 
Um, John Wayne, I'll talk about him in a second. I'm a big Robert Mitchum fan. So Howard Hawks, I love, I love film noir. So, you know, he did Maltese Falcon. Um, and the big sleep you mentioned a second ago is maybe top five favorite movies of mine. I'm a giant Humphrey Bogart fan. Oh, wow. Um, and so Mitchum's was a noir star. So it was interesting to see him in this turn. And I thought he was fantastic. I think Robert Mitchum was probably my favorite part of this movie. Um, yeah. we'll kind of talk about it, but his transformation at the, you know, at the start, he's kind of this sheriff that everyone's scared of. Then the next time we see him, he's this absolute drunkard disaster, like yeah. lack stock of the town. And then watching his transformation, like in, in his friends, helping sort of nurse him physically and emotionally back into the, to the, to the tough guy that he was, was cool. And I thought he had the acting chops every step of the way. Um, yeah. So I really, really liked Robert Mitchum in this. Um, and the other thing I liked what, that I did not expect was it, the movie was funny. Lots yeah. of innuendo, like the scene when he's in the bathtub and everybody come, come in and trying to give him bar soap. Like it could have been hokey. It actually wasn't because of his charm. Yeah. Um, and John Wayne had a twinkle that I didn't expect um, again, because I just haven't watched him a whole lot. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I, between all those things, the acting was pretty solid. James Conn was a pleasant surprise. Mitchum crushed it, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And it was funny. It made me laugh in addition to being kind of a, a fun shoot em up. Yeah. Uh, my my favorite, favorite thing is actually kind of funny, but the opening credits, how they have all these paintings. Um, I, feel, I feel like I've seen the, those actual paintings in the um, Cowboy Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City. Um, so like right away, like I, that's one of the things I love about, especially like sixties Westerns is they always have these unique kind of intros, uh, because those are like the credit scenes, you know what I mean? And so that's why I chose this as my background. Yeah. And I so they it. I have it like these cool, um, everybody does them differently. And so this one chose to do these great Western paintings and, you know, as a big fan of, of not just art, but Western art, uh, you know, my favorite painter is Albert Bierstadt who painted a bunch of western landscapes so already I, I i just like i can literally just watch the movie like the beginning over and over just to look at the art like that's how much i love that so that was probably my favorite favorite thing the um, song was perfect too <laughs> yeah this song that's the, they always write these new original songs too for these westerns so this is just a time for for me i just think the 60s westerns this is pretty much i think the heyday of westerns where they're pump i mean they're pumping them out a lot and everybody loves them and everybody wants to be a part of them. You're seeing some of the best actors uh, of that generation all partake in it, whether it's Gregory Peck, James Stewart, of course, John Wayne, who's known as, you know, the Western guy, uh, but Robert Mitchum, like we just talked about. Um, and then Eastwood, like, Redford, yeah, Eastwood, Redford, James Conn, of course, uh, got in the mix here. And so, I, and I know I'm, there's many more, um, but just this is this is they would all come into this genre and so there's just many 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 great films in the 60s and this is where i think too like you're saying like the hokiness i feel like the 60s is where the films are actually starting to really be well well crafted like john ford is you know really using great cameras and movement um really capturing landscapes uh, within it the editing is much better i mean i think again i think everything is kind of coming together in the 60s when it comes to making westerns i and, agree and even like I, I look at my top five list and what a lot of them are in, in this time period three of them are in this time period. four of them are in this time period yeah the production value on this movie was way better than i expected yeah so that's that's what i think ultimately that's one of the reasons why i chose this film one i haven't actually seen the full thing so i wanted to see it but then yeah, I just knew it. Like, if you watch some in the fifties, fifties can be kind of rough. Some of them are in black and white, which I, I, I'm not. I do like black and white, but I love again the this time period. And again, Howard Hawks one of my favorite directors. So, um, yeah, that's what I love most about this. Uh, does this movie hold up? I felt like we kind of already answered all of this, so we don't need to really <laughs> go on to that point. Sure. Uh, so let's go into contemporary comparison. This one's going to be tough. Do you want me to go first, Drew, or did you? Have yeah, one? go ahead. Um, so the best one I can really come up with is True Grit. And uh, obviously there is a movie made in this time period as well. Uh, and it's redone with um, Josh Brolin and um, 
uh, Haley Steinfeld and uh, Matt Damon, of course, done by the Coen brothers. And to me, this it's like the best kind of, it's not a one-to-one, of course, like, you know, it, it, it's a pretty unique film in general, but the reason why I said True Grit is just because, you know, your heroes aren't really heroes, you know, in, in this film. Like, again, like Robert M- M- Mitchum is, is a drunk. Uh, John Wayne is pretty much uh mercenary. So he could be good. He could be bad. Like, you don't really know, Um, which again, kind of mirrors True Grit a little bit. And then you just have the different factions. So you have like you have them all kind of come together and you don't really know who's good, who's bad. And and that's the only reason why I kind of chose uh true great. And of course they're both great films. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's my contemporary comparison. Go, what is yours? Awesome. Drew? Yeah. First of all, I have to give him a couple. I've said it now, I think twice. I, I'm so embarrassed. Howard Hawks directed big sleep, not Maltese Falcon. Maltese Falcon was John Houston. So oh, but, that's what I thought. Yeah. you said it. And I'm yeah, like, both, both of those are, both of those films are films. I love, um, I don't know how I mix that up, but anyway, I love Howard Hawks and I already said big sleep is one of my favorite movies. So he was great. He did great in this film. Um, the other, so for me, the contemporary comparison, I, I don't know. I, I was getting so caught up in like the Western genre and like having a hard time finding my way out of that. So yeah. this is a super, not a very clever comparison or, or, I don't know that what I'm going to say makes sense, but I couldn't kind of get hell or high, uh, hell or high water out of my mind. Um, okay. Not very different, like not anything close yeah. to the same premises, but um, I don't know, just kind of like a, a little bit of an interesting sheriff who, you know, Jeff Bridges doesn't anyway. So it, not perfect, but a similar sort of, atmosphere and vibes um a little bit of territory there's it deals with property stuff um and people trying to protect their you know protect their land protect their people um so i don't know for me that was the one but like i said it not my best work in terms of coming up with contemporary (laughs) yeah it's all good it was tough it was tough for me i like i said there's not i don't think there's a one-to-one comparison unless you go like really deep into some smaller yeah i I try to use a big one just so people know but yeah. yeah um no worries um so this one should be fun uh should this movie be made today and who should it star Uh, yes i think so for sure um this is a great great film great premise you could retell the story as is you know with some modern twists whatever Uh, i've had a lot of fun trying to think about who could play these different people um and an age was a part of it though the actors were a little bit older in the movie than i would have expected um looking yeah. at their, their their dates like john wayne was 60 so yeah. i was a little bit nervous that i was going to skew too old and I, that's my tendency when i do this because those actors resonate with me but i kind of so let me start with saying john wayne john wayne we've talked about this before there are actors that are just themselves yeah, it's a different script, and and I, I've only, like I haven't seen a ton of John Wayne, but I can tell he's just John Wayne, and then it just depends on like what his name in the movie is and yeah. whatever else. When he's just being himself, like John Wayne is John Wayne, he's actually a, an okay actor. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's lighting the world on on fire, but when he's acting, it's brutal. Like all the scenes where he's injured in his hand and he's cradling his hand, like falling around is it was kind of funny but um so i was trying to think of like who who i think would be a fun they had to be big um so for me i was kind of loving the idea of vince vaughn playing playing the john wayne role um a little younger but yeah for sure a little younger and then and then i'm gonna go a little older for the mitchum character not a ton older but a little bit older um and i was kind of thinking jeff bridges could do a good job as kind of that like laconic you know, at, at one it's point drunk. he's out then and the next he's drunk and then kind of that that playfulness. And then I don't know if we wanted to go to James Kahn. Um I didn't yeah, necessarily I, I, I didn't James Kahn too, so go for it. Um I, I was like again, age is a little bit older, but I think he can play younger. To me, Owen Wilson seemed like it, it, he could be perfect for that role. Oh, I think he's a little old though. Could be too old. Yeah, yeah. I think you need somebody in their twenties to do that role. But um yeah. Only because it's like that you have to have that age difference between. He is a kid for sure. Yeah. Uh, So I went with 
Uh, I'm with you. Absolutely. This should be remade. It actually kind of inspires me to kind of look at the, I almost want to read the book and see if I can rewrite this. Uh, so keep, keep, keep your eye on that one. I actually really would be interested in rewriting this. Um, my number one guy is going to be Kevin Costner for Cole. I think, like you said, Kevin Costner yeah. is very similar to John Wayne in terms of a, he's done Westerns. He's a athletic big guy, just like John Wayne was. So he has that presence. He's no longer a young cat. So he's got that the mileage on him. Yeah. Um, and then he's just likable. And like you're saying, can kind of, uh, handle both roles. Right. Uh, and then I have, uh, Tom Blythe as Mississippi. Uh, he just did the new Hunger Games. He also did was Billy the Kid in the, the TV series on MGM Plus slash Paramount Plus. Nice. Um, I really like him. He was good in that series. Um, got he has that charm. He he obviously he's done Western, so he can handle that aspect of it and looks the part. Um, and just a good looking guy as well. So I I feel like he. And I feel like his career is just going to be like James Conn. I, mean, I, I think this guy's got a lot of talent and potential. Um, he, he's only going to continue to rise. So that I thought that was a good Mississippi choice. And then for JP, I just tried to think of, uh, you know, who's, you know, again, who plays a great drunk? And I was like, Billy Bob Thornton. Uh -huh. uh, he's awesome in Bad Santa, but then can turn it on. Uh, I love his voice. So I feel like Billy Bob Thornton, you know, you could add a ton of comedy to it. Yeah. And, you know, especially like, you, you know, you can do R-rated and just have Billy Bob Thornton, you know, throw insults at people and stuff like that. I, I, I just think I thought Bad Santa, you know, and, and, and Billy Bob Thornton was, of course, in Tombstone as well. Right. And he plays, you know, he's the the, the yelling uh, dealer that gets punked by. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Russell and so I was just like oh, you know I think that could work you know that could be a good role so that those are my my picks for that he was kind of fat in that it was weird he was he lost a lot of weight he's like he's... almost unrecognizable yeah 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 yeah, for sure yeah he was super overweight back then but he's he's lost lost a ton of weight so no, guys no. We, we we thought so hey uh let's come up with our top five westerns before 1980 and so uh we'll do round robin like normal five to one uh, Drew, start off. What's your number five best Western before 1980? Uh, I went with it's a it's it's a Western for sure, but not a prototypical one that you think of like with the same kind of gunfighting, cowboys and Indians. I went with Treasure of Sierra Madre. Um, I mentioned earlier, I love Humphrey Bogart. You know, I uh, thought about that one, but I was just like, ah, it's not really a Western. I know, I, I, I but it kind of is. Yeah. It's a so, borderline. I mean, it's very, very borderline. That's why it's number five. It's kind of an iffy one. Good film, though. I like that film a lot. Yeah, love it. It's a great movie. And uh, John Huston directing. That's a film, actually, I would love to remake as Treasure of Sierra Madre. Totally. John Huston directing his father, Walter Huston, who's the yeah, old yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, It's great. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, my number five. I actually switched this, but um, it's probably one of the older Westerns that I've seen a lot. And it's High Noon. And I watched it in film school. I, I bought it. Um, so one of the films I just would watch over and over again. I think it's just a great, great script. Grace Kelly's in it. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's kind of a... Um, so this was written by uh, somebody that was blacklisted. And so this film kind of mirrors, like, the, the witch hunt that was happening at the time. And so it's a really cool story about everybody kind of turning their back and on a guy and he's got to kind of defend himself against the whole town kind of a thing so really really great film well made well crafted gary cooper's stars in it and uh yeah that's my number five and then my number four is also one i've watched many times um it's probably my second favorite john uh john ford film and it's the man who shot liberty balance and that mm -hmm. one stars john wayne james stewart and it's, I think it won the Oscar, I believe that year, um, or got nominated at least, but it's, uh, one of my favorite Westerns, obviously it's number four and, uh, yeah, that's my four. I think I have seen that a long time ago, but I need to rewatch it. I couldn't put it in the list cause I didn't remember it a ton, but I remember yeah. thinking that was good. Um, my number four is, I, you know, for me, it's, it's kind of impossible to not throw Clint Eastwood in there. Um, I could have done any of the like gunslinger trilogy. Um, we had talked earlier, like unforgiven doesn't make the cut because it's too modern. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm going with kind of the classic, the really long one, the good, bad, and the ugly. But really, I could have thrown any of the three um, Sergio Leone ones in there, you know, Fistful yeah. of Dollars. But uh, that one, you know, it it furthered the genre. It introduced Eastwood as, as who he is. Um, and just really th those that those vibes of the spaghetti western are great. Is is High Plains Drifter in that one uh, in that trilogy? I don't think so, but I think it's like playing off of it. I think it's a fistful of dollars and for a few dollars more. And then it's been I a know, while. Yeah, Clint Eastwood directed this one. Yeah. yeah, if I had to pick a Clint Eastwood, it would be High Plains Drifter, but um, I had to put High Noon because I've watched it more times than the Clint Eastwood ones. So it was tough. I, 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 you know, spoiler, I don't have a Clint Eastwood film in it. And I feel like I wronged, yeah. it. but he, he's yeah. like number six, probably. I put, I really like High Plains Drifter. He could be like six through like 10, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. High Plains Drifter, also a great Beastie Boy song. Yeah. Um, number three, I put um, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Yeah, um, nice. It's classic. I love it. Newman. Yeah. Red Ford, it's that one's a little stylistic, like super 60s. Which the only Wait for my next one, if you want to hear stylistic, <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason why I didn't, it didn't make mine, but that's also probably in that six to 10. Uh, yeah. I do like it. I own it. I watched it several times, but uh, yeah. Um, my number three is kind of the Western that started it all. And it's stagecoach uh, again, another John Ford film is my favorite director. Um, you know, this one, this one's more for it's, I don't think obviously because it's made in the thirties, I don't think it's as good as a film as the other ones, but you know, this is, this was the first film that really had a crazy action sequence, you know, on the stage coaches chasing each other, you know, no film had ever really done that before. And then also shot in Monument Valley for the first time. So this was just, this one is like the one that started it all. So I, I had, that was the first one shot in Monument Valley. I believe so. A major film. That's cool. Yeah. So I had to include that one. And then my number two, uh, this one is kind of like the upset alert, I think. Um, some people have seen this one. I don't think everyone has, but it, it, it's another uh, technically spaghetti Western, I believe. And it's Once Upon a Time in the West. And the reason why I just love this film is how the film opens. There's like no talking for, I don't know, like 10 minutes. I forget exactly how long, but it's just like these, it's just like hardcore sounds and it just makes you feel uncomfortable, which is the point. And it, it's just it's just so awesome, like the film techniques that this film used. And it's it's entertaining too. It's a little long, but it, it's it's super entertaining. Uh, again, considered uh, one of the classics. And again, I just love the actual filmmaking that was involved in this film. Um, very good. Uh, I will say that. Um... My number two is also Once Upon a Time in the West. And, you, you know, you're talking about stylized. Yeah. yeah I agree. The, the, that start to the movie is so unique. And it, it's one of the best starts in it's such, film history. It's such a statement. To me, the only, the, the contemporary comparison for that and an obvious homage to that, to me in my mind, is There Will Be Blood. The way that movie starts out without any dialogue at all for a long time and, and watching Daniel Plainview do his thing. So Once Upon a Time in the West is a classic. It is an Artur's film. It, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then my number one, I, this could be an upset. I don't know. Uh, Blazing Saddles. <laughs> That's definitely an upset. That's good, though. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Couldn't uh, help it. I love that movie. It's a, it's a Western. Obviously, it's a cop, but yeah, I, it Blazing Saddles. Yeah, my number one is is was going to be on number one for many people's list, uh, but it's The Searchers. Um, again, for me, it's the cinematography in that film is excellent. Again, this is John Ford in his prime. There's only a few things, you know, that are, are bad about this, including the casting of an extremely white man to play uh, the head of the uh, uh, Comanche uh, chief, but um, with blue eyes, uh, Native American with blue eyes, but Besides that, if you can if you can overcome some of the bad that 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 then it's a excellent film. Besides that, and similarly for the one piece that I didn't say when does it hold up El Dorado? It does. That scene with James Caan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When he like acts as the Asian guy to like so <laughs> unnecessary and preposterous. Yeah. But anyway, um, that piece didn't hold up, but everything else did. Yeah. Yeah. What what makes like the searchers 
even even though like some parts don't hold up of course um like just the rampant racism because it's true like there was a hardcore racism against native americans at that time and so yeah. the searchers is a hard movie in terms of that where it really delves into dealing with your protagonist that's a racist you know and it's it it, it 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 wasn't a time period thing it was like that was part of the story you know and, and um that's that was like the bold move really that that came a part of it so big part of why i love that film too like i said it's just a deeper characters i'll tell you one thing this movie has made me want to go back and watch a lot of these old westerns that i never did searchers is one stage yeah. so i'm gonna I'm what gonna be- what i recommend i mean what we're definitely gonna because i love westerns we're definitely gonna you know probably do at least one western a month just because i love of them as well there's a few i haven't seen that are on like the top 10 list so uh, you gotta throw a noir in soon oh yeah for sure for sure uh awesome well yeah so guys i think you definitely check this out if you haven't seen it um you know both of us like this movie so i think it's a no-brainer um if you like westerns i think you'll like this film and um so our next film is going to be on hbo max and I want to choose a um there's a couple newer and I'm big quotes on that one newer Charlie Chaplin films like past the silent era that are highly acclaimed that I haven't seen yet. And so I wanted to choose one of Charlie Chaplin's films and so I chose Modern Times which is uh, came out in 1936. Uh so we'll be watching that for the next episode. And then if you haven't caught our other episodes, we've already reviewed Marathon Man with Dustin Hoffman. And also the great Waddle Pepper with Robert Redford. So make sure you guys check out those episodes as well. Make sure you guys like and share, comment and subscribe, please. Uh, help us grow. Again, we want to keep continue making content for you guys, uh, different types of content. So whether you're into the new movies, we have that podcast. If you want to just hear kind of movie news, we got that. And then now we all have the, this old classic, kind of like a book club to where, hey man, I want to, I want to watch an old movie. What can I watch? What should I watch? boom hop on this journey with us because we'll be watching one a week so uh thanks again drew for joining us we appreciate you uh again make sure you check out next week when we have modern times with charlie chapman and with that drew that is a cut thanks guys